Hello everyone and welcome back to the Physio Quest series presented by Physio Trends. In this series, normally every Thursdays and every Saturdays, I put questions on the community tab of my YouTube channel, and after that, I give answers for both the questions on every Sunday with the video. For this week videos, uh, Harsh Modi and Physio Buddy have given the correct answer for the first question with the almost clear reasoning. So now I am going to tell you all about the my answer as well as my way of reasoning for the same question. So let's begin with the question number 21st. So question number 20 basically says that while observing a patient with post traumatic brain injury, the therapist notes an increase in left ankle plantar flexion during loading response which is his strike to foot flat. Of the involved lower extremity with this particular patient, the left side is involved side. So which of the following is not likely a cause of this deviation? Option given are option A spasticity of the left gastronomius, option B hypotonicity, sorry it is hypertonicity of the left tibialis anterior, option C leg length discrepancy and option D left quadriceps hypertonicity. Now guys here uh, answer correct answer is answer B as well as answer D I am going to explain you how. First let's say what is wrong with the option A and option C. Option A of course because it is telling that spasticity of the gastronomius which obviously is going to cause the plantar flexion so that option is eliminated. Option C tells that there will be leg length discrepancy. Now guys when you are taking the assessment leg length discrepancy we can eliminate in the initial stage itself. So that part also we are no, not going to mention over here we are going to eliminate that option as well. Remaining option option B very easy to understand that because of the hypertonicity of the tibialis anterior. Yes the tibialis anterior is in the opposite group of the gastronomia. So if it is hypertoned it is never going to let it cause the plantar flexion it will be in dorsiflexion only. So yes that answer is correct and the option D guys Harsh Modi I will defer with your point over here. I will explain you how because see yes hypertonicity in the cordyceps can cause hyper extension in the knee joint and because of that it is going to cause a same condition like the general recover metum which can cause plantar flexion at the ankle joint but here the situation given to us is about the loading response special thing we are given here loading response so during the loading response even if there is hyper extension it is not going to cause the plantar flexion of the ankle joint during the loading response so that is why option d also can be correct answer over here now talking about the next question asked in this series which was just yesterday saturday was again about the neurological condition and the question says that a therapist evaluates a 76 year old woman who has involved who was involved in a motor vehicle accident two days ago. The patient has normal sensation and strength in the bilateral lower extremities, but paralysis and loss of sensation in bilateral upper extremities. Bowel and bladder functions are normal, so the patient most likely has which type of spinal cord injury. Now guys, this is again a straightforward question. If you know about the different levels of spinal cord injury, you can right away answer these questions. But I am going to discuss the answers over here. Whatever options we are, we have got, we have received here is option A, which is anterior cord syndrome, option B, brown sequard syndrome, option C, central cord syndrome, and option D, there is no evidence of an incomplete spinal cord lesion. Now, first I will discuss about the option D. There is no evidence of complete, uh, incomplete spinal cord lesion. I don't agree to this. Why? Because already we have give, been given information that patient has. Uh, experienced a motor vehicle accident and we know, we know that in motor vehicle accidents most common injury is whiplash injury which means moving forward of the head and coming back to the extension which can cause some amount of the spinal cord injury during the motor vehicle accident so option D is eliminated from here next option we are given is brown sequard syndrome brown sequard syndrome again what happens the ipsilateral side is affected completely in which upper limb lower limb both are affected again it is not matching with the information given to us in the question so the remaining option which is left here is central cord syndrome in central cord syndrome it basically involves only and only upper limbs sparing the sacral and lumbar spine 
and because of which lower limb has complete sensation as well as motor functioning so that is why the correct answer over here will be option c which is central cord syndrome so guys i hope you have understood the answers for this week and uh, i also hope that you are enjoying this series but please 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 to motivate me keep commenting and keep liking and keep sharing this video so that i get motivated to put more and more questions for you all because it really takes a little bit of hard work to put this kind of questions and again make videos every week for the explanation i hope you will understand my situation and also will support me the best way you can see you all next week with more questions and more answers and more reasoning thank you so much for being on the physio trends